Okay. So now I want you to come down to the second half of the page, and this function should look familiar. Have a look at the numbers there. Do you remember this from this morning? We looked at this like four times, right? This is x squared plus 5x plus 6. I'm only telling you that so you actually know what some of these values are. For example, that vertex, you know exactly where it is, right? What's the y value? It's negative a quarter, right? Negative 0 0.25, right? So can you tell me what is the reciprocal of negative a quarter? Four. It's negative four, isn't it? So keep, do you hear how I keep on saying, what is the y value of? What is the y value? So when I'm taking the reciprocal, what I'm turning upside down is the y value. If that's negative a quarter, negative four looks like it's going to be about here, right? So let's go ahead, let's put a cross there. Negative four is there. Think about how we did the uh, hyperbola up the top here, right? What other important values did I search for? Y equals, can anyone suggest to me? What might be an important value that I looked for? I, I got, I, there are, there are y-intercepts, right? And I was like, oh, that's 6. I know what the reciprocal of 6 is. It's 1 over 6. Uh, that's a bit harder to put on, but you can still, it's going to be pretty close to 0, isn't it? Right, so I'm just going to put that there, roughly. Let me give you a reminder, right? There were some points that I looked at, some values, that in the original graph, the very first one, I got a vertical asymptote. What value of y in the original function gave me an asymptote, a vertical one, in the reciprocal function? Where is it? It's x equals 2, but what's the y value? It's the y value I'm concentrating on. It's a 0, right? Do you see any places where this guy is equal to 0? Yeah, I see two of them, right? Negative 2 and negative 3. So what shape are you going to draw there? What's the reciprocal of 0? Oh, it's, it's the reciprocal of 0, it's 1 over 0, it's undefined, so what shape did we get on the original graph? We got a vertical asymptote. At those spots, you're not allowed to go there. So, like, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a vertical, a vertical, vertical, right? Vertical asymptote here, vertical asymptote here. I've got two of them, right? So I'm going to draw in one here. So whenever the original function is zero, the reciprocal function can't exist. So it, yeah, because you can't divide by zero. You can't take the reciprocal of zero. Why is it vertical and horizontal? Because this is the value where I'm not allowed to go, right? Just like up here. Where is the x value I'm not allowed to go? Answer, x equals two, right? x equals two is the thing that breaks things down, okay? In this case, it's not x equals two, it's x equals negative two, and what was the other one? x equals negative 3. Those are the x values that break it, right? So that's why the asymptote is an x equals negative 2 or negative 3. That's the places I'm not allowed to go. Okay? All right. Now, uh, we've just put in these two vertical asymptotes, so we should label them. This is x equals negative 2. You're not allowed to go there. And x equals negative 3. You're not allowed to go there either. Okay? So that's when that's because... When we go there, y equals zero. That's right. Uh, when y equals zero here and here, you can't take the reciprocal. It just explodes in your face, right? You're like, I can't divide by zero. Okay, so that's why I have a vertical asymptote. All right, are there any other values? Think back to when we did this one, right? What other important values did I look at? Yeah, Rasen. Uh, I did the y intercept, though I think I've already done the y intercept on this one, haven't I? Six gave me one over six, okay? Um, do you remember I looked at these guys here? See this here? Do you know those guys? What value is that? Where they intersect there. They intersect, right? Because y is equal to, have a look at the graph again. What's y equal to? Here. One. It's one. one. And what about here? Negative. Negative one. The reason why those matter to me is because the reciprocal of one is one, one and the reciprocal of negative one is negative. also negative one. So I want you to have a look at the graph. I want you to find any places where this graph is equal to one or negative one. Go ahead, look, you've got a scale here, right? Go and find those spots and mark those in. I'll give you a second to do that. Did you find them? Um, this looks like one to me. In fact, what you can do is you can literally get a ruler out, right? We're graphing. If you don't have a ruler nearby, you should. And you can put a horizontal line through, there we go, through one, right? So I'm like, oh, right there, 
and right there. Those are the points where, because the original graph is one, the reciprocal is also one, right? So these are my two spots right here and here. Okay. Now I'm almost there. I've got a lot of important values here, x's. I've got some places I'm not allowed to go. The last thing I asked was, when does the original function get big? If the original function gets big, then the reciprocal gets real small, right? And also vice versa, okay? So where can you tell me the original function gets big? Yeah, as x values increase, right? That original function is going up and up and up, never comes back. And you can see that's why, oh, that's why this is so low, right? Because as this gets higher, the reciprocal is going to get lower, right? Is there anywhere else this happens? Where else is the original function big? Not just on the right-hand side. Oh, on the left side. Yeah, on the left-hand side, same deal, right? You've got huge values over there. Same deal. So you're going to get, surprise, surprise, another horizontal asymptote. And again, we're going to be approaching y equals 0. You're going to notice... This happens a lot. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to point something out on this graph that I didn't point out before because you're starting to get a little bit of the hang of it, right? Can you just um, look back at the first graph? Here it is. Right. What I want you to pay attention to is the sign. That's positive or negative. The sign of the original function versus the reciprocal function. Okay, so for example, over on this right hand side here, do you notice the original function is positive? Yeah, just on this part? What can you tell me about the sign of the reciprocal when the original is positive? positive. The reciprocal is also positive. Let me say that again, okay? When the original is positive, the reciprocal is positive. What about the other side? If the original is negative, the reciprocal is negative. That's so important, I want to state that. I'm going to like write that down. The sign of the reciprocal, that's the thing we're drawing, right? The sign of the reciprocal, whether it's positive or negative, it matches the sign of the original. If the original was positive, so is the reciprocal. If the original is negative, so is the reciprocal, okay? Now I can use that fact to help me. Let me just make that a bit bigger for you. Sorry, it's messy. I can use this fact to help me with this new function, okay? Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. If you have a pencil or a highlighter, something you can use to shade so you don't like completely ruin the graph you're about to do. Once you've written this down, let's have a look here, right? Where is my original negative? There's only one little section where it's negative. You see it? It's between what x values? Negative 2, negative 3, right? So in this section here, because the original is negative, I'm going to shade underneath the axis, whoops, because if the original is negative, so will the reciprocal. The reciprocal graph I'm about to draw, it's going to be down in here, okay? Where is the original positive? Everything. Every other spot, right? So on the right of negative 2, on the left of negative 3. In those areas, the original is positive, so the reciprocal also positive, right? So I'm going to shade those areas like so. Uh, I'm going to get a thicker highlighter. There we go. In these areas I'm shading right now, yep. you can see the original, the black graph, is positive. And if the original is positive, the reciprocal will also be positive. Yeah? So I'll do the left-hand side as well. Whoops, that's a bit fatter than I thought it was. So we're not going to be drawing the uh, We are. I just want to know where it goes. This will make it easier for me to make sure I get the shape. <laughs> Okay, now I want you to have a look, right? What we have drawn here is kind of like, this is where your reciprocal function has to go. It's got to stay in these blue shaded areas. It's got to go through all the, the blue X's. It's got to uh, obey these asymptotes that I've drawn in, okay? I'm going to give you a second to think about where would you join up the dots? Can you have a go? I'm not going to do it for you just yet. Where would you, maybe do this in pencil so you can rub out if necessary. Where do you think this graph is going to go? I'm going to give you a minute to have a think about that and then I'm going to come around and have a look. 